Hi everyone, this is Mrs. GA, and today we're going to be modeling quantities. Uh, so here's a quick warm up for you guys. Uh, solve the following two equations, and we'll check your answers in just a few seconds. All right, go ahead and check your answers here. Um, so for part A, remember, since the entire numerator is being divided by 3, our first step should be multiplying both sides by 3, and then the rest is pretty straightforward from there. And for part B, a couple steps we do need to distribute where we see this parentheses. Um, so that gives us 3x minus 12. And then you might notice that there are two terms with x on the same side of your equation. So we can combine 3x and negative 2x to get x. And then the last hurdle is that you have a variable on each side. So remember, pick the smaller variable, which in this case is 1x, and move it by subtracting. Um, so that gives us this, and then the rest um, is just your basic um, inverse operations, giving you x equals 1. Okay, so some vocabulary for um, today's lesson. Uh, first, a word we're going to use a lot is the word scale. So a scale is simply a ratio that allows you to represent an object as larger or smaller than the original object. Um, so this can be really useful in real life, like if you're drawing plans for a house. Of course, you can't draw the actual size of a house, so you can use a scale to make a smaller version on paper. Um, dimensional analysis is a method of converting unit measures, which will be really useful for you guys not only in math, but in other subjects such as science. And last, um, conversion factor is the ratio of two equal quantities measured in different um, units. So it's two things that are measured in different units, but the same amount. So how many feet equal a mile? Something like that would be a conversion factor. Okay, we're going to start uh, today's lesson by working with scale drawings and models. Um, so in example one here, you see that we have a scaled map of North Carolina. So pretty much on any map, you can look for uh, what it was called the scale. So if you look right here, you'll see that they tell us a scale so we know what the relationship between the map size and the actual distance of the things on the map is. So this says that one centimeter represents 75 kilometers. So that means one centimeter on the map represents 75 kilometers in real life. So we're going to use this scale to help us solve the following problems. So first it says on your map the distance from Charlotte to Raleigh is 2.25 centimeters. So let's pretend we actually measured it and it was 2.25 centimeters. What is the actual distance in kilometers between the two cities? So we can use the scale to help us. So first we're going to set up our scale factor. We know the scale factor is one centimeter for every 75 real life kilometers. Um, and then we can set it equal to, well we know on the map we measured 2.25 centimeters. Notice that in the numerators both sides represent the map and then in the denominator it's going to represent the actual distance. So since we're this is what we're trying to find we're going to give it a variable and I'll pick x. So now all we have to do is solve for x. So um, with problems like this where we have two ratios um, we can actually cross multiply. So maybe you've done this before you multiply top to the bottom and then top to the bottom diagonally. So we do x times 1, which is just x, and then we're just going to do 75 times 2.25. And that should give us 168.75. So remember what we just found was the actual distance, so that would be in kilometers. So we were able to use the map and the scale on the map to actually determine how far apart those two cities are. Uh, now let's look at part B. This says, according to Google, the actual distance from Winston-Salem to Raleigh is 130 kilometers. What is the distance between the two on your map? So if we know what the actual distance is, what should be the distance when we measure with a ruler on our map? So again, here, we're going to use that same scale. 1 to 75. However, this time they're telling us the actual distance is 130 kilometers. So you have to make sure that since we're working with the actual distance on the other side of our equation, 
130 is going to go on the bottom. Again, the denominator represents the actual distance in this case. And then this is what we're trying to solve for. So you can pick a variable. Maybe this time I'll call it y. And now we can cross multiply again. So this gives us 75y, which is 75 times y equals 130. And then we can finish solving. And then here, let's actually get a decimal approximation all around to the nearest um, tenth. We could say 1.7 approximately. And again, we were finding what the distance on our map would be, so that would be centimeters. So you can see that we can actually use our scale to go um, both ways, either to find the actual distance or to find the distance that it would be on the map. Okay, let's try another one together. So this one is a scale model. So this says a scale model of a human heart is 196 inches long. The scale is 32 to one. How many inches long is the actual heart? Round your answer to the nearest whole number. So we're going to first create our scale. So it tells us that the scale is 32 to one. So 32 to one, um, is in reference to the scale model to the real. So we're going to have the scale on top and then the actual heart measurement is on the bottom. So they tell us that our scale is 32 to 1. And in the problem, they also tell us that this scale model of the heart is 196 inches long, so I'm going to put that in the numerator because that's in reference to the scale. And then to find the actual um, length of the heart, we'll pick a variable because it's our unknown, and I'll call it x. So now we have our equation, and we can solve this by cross-multiplying. So 32 times x is 32x equals 196. And then we can divide both sides by 32. So notice this time they ask us to round to the nearest whole number. So let me show you what our calculator should tell us. Our calculator should tell us 6.125. So if we're going to round that to the nearest whole number, they're asking for no decimals. So I look here, since the number to the right is less than 5, um, 6 is going to stay the same. So we can say approximately 6 inches long. So that would be the length of an actual heart. So I think the thing to be careful about with these types of problems is to make sure that you're consistent of um, what the numerators represent and what the denominators represent on both sides. It needs to be the same on both sides. All right, so at this point, I'm going to ask that you pause the video and see if you can use the scale drawing um, of a car to determine the actual length of the car. Okay, let's check our answers. So you can see right here that they tell you that the scale of um, the drawing to the actual car is 1 to 18. So 1 to 18. And they tell us that this drawing is 10.5 inches. The two tick marks here, guys, means inches. So that's going to go on top because that's the scale. And then the actual length we'll call x because we don't know it. So then we cross multiply and you should get 189 inches. Okay, so now uh, we're going to transition into converting um, different units of measurement using that new method called dimensional analysis. So again, that's just kind of the setup that will help us convert. So we're going to start with a really basic problem. Um, this one says, how many minutes are in three weeks? So we pretty much want to take three weeks and change the units from weeks to minutes. So when we start with dimensional analysis, you're always going to start with what you know. So we know three weeks. And then the setup looks kind of funky. I like to set it up like this. So first, we need to change weeks into something else. So probably the most common conversion that you know is from weeks to days. Now I know that's not quite to minutes yet, but that's okay. We're actually gonna change it um, in a number of different intervals. So since we have weeks currently on the top 
of our fraction, the way to make this disappear is to have weeks on the bottom. So I'm going to put weeks on the bottom. I'll just put week. And then we know that a conversion, a really common conversion is one week gives you seven days. So again, we're not yet in minutes, but we're closer. At least it's a smaller unit. And then look what happens here. Since we have weeks on the top and week on the bottom, this unit cancels out and now we are in days. But of course, we don't wanna be in days, we wanna be in minutes. So we have to keep converting it to something even smaller. So again, we don't want days. Since days is on the top, I'm gonna to put day on the bottom. And then we have to think, is there a, a conversion rate that we know um, that can turn days into something smaller? Well, we know that in one day, there are 24 hours. So now that days cancels out, uh, we are now in hours, so a little bit closer to minutes. Again, notice any time that I do a conversion rate like this, the thing on the top and the thing on the bottom must always be equal. 24 hours is equal to one day. Seven days is equal to one week. So these must be equal. Okay, let's see if we can keep converting. So again, here, we don't want hours. Our goal is to get to minutes. Well, luckily, we know that in one hour, there are 60 minutes. And again, since we have hours in the numerator and denominator, that unit cancels out, and the only unit that we have left is minutes. So with dimensional analysis, when you're all done with your conversions, all you have to do is multiply the numbers across the top, multiply the numbers across the bottom, and divide. So here, the numbers in the bottom are all 1, so we don't have to worry about that. So here we just do 3 times 7 times 24 times 60. So this should give us 30,240 minutes. So that's how many minutes are in three weeks. Okay, let's try another conversion. Uh, maybe one that's a little bit trickier because maybe it's not as common of a conversion that you're used to. Um, so this says a large adult male has about 12 pints of blood. Convert this measurement to gallons using the conversion factors given. So the only um, information that we know at this point is that um, two pints will give us a quart and four quarts will give us a gallon. So remember with dimensional analysis, we're going to always start with the given information, which is 12 pints. Okay, and remember our goal is to eventually get to gallons. However, um, we don't know the direct conversion straight from pints to gallons, but we do know that we can change pints into quarts. So let's do that first. So again, since we have pints on the top to cancel it out, we need to put pints on the bottom. And then our conversion is that two pints is equal to one quart. So this has now changed our unit to quarts because pints has canceled out. Um, so now we have to change quarts to gallons. So again, since we have quarts on the top, we're going to put quarts on the bottom to cancel it out. And then we can use our conversion factor. So we know that there's four quarts in one gallon. So the unit quarts has now canceled out, and the only unit we have left is gallons. So that's the unit we are currently in. So then for this, all we do again is we multiply across the top, so 12 times 1 times 1, which is 12, and then we multiply across the bottom, 2 times 4 is 8, so we have 12 over 8, which for this problem, let's write it as a decimal, which is 1.5 gallons. So um, the nice thing about dimensional analysis is it's really organized and it really allows you to keep track of the different steps you've used in converting and this kind of allows you to make sure that you're actually in the correct unit by the end. So again, we went from pints to quarts and then from quarts to gallons. 
Okay, let's try one more together. So this says the length of a building is 720 inches. Convert this measurement to yards using the conversion factor. One yard is equal to three feet. So again, our starting point is 720 inches. Okay, so our conversion factor tells us how to get from feet to yards. So it'd, it'd be really nice if we could first change these inches into feet. So that should be a conversion factor that we all know. Um, we should know that there's 12 inches in a foot. So since we have inches on the top, we're going to put make sure that inches is in the bottom. And again, the conversion factor is that 12 inches is equal to one foot. Remember, the value on the top and the value on the bottom always need to be equal. So now we are currently in feet for our units. Um, so now we can go from feet to yards. So we're gonna put feet in the denominator to make sure they cancel out. And the conversion factor we were given is that three feet is equal to one yard. So we are now in yards. So now all we need to do is multiply the numbers across the top, giving you 720, multiply the numbers across the bottom, giving you 36. And then you just divide, which gives you 20 yards. There you have it. All right, so at this point, um, please pause the video and give this problem a try on your own. We'll check your answer in just a few seconds. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, if we're going from seconds to hours, again, we can go first from seconds to minutes and then minutes to hours. Um, so if you multiply across the top and then across the bottom and divide, this should give you approximately 2.1 hours. All right, here's another you try. Again, pause the video and try this one on your own and we'll check your answer in just a few seconds. Okay, so here you can see that we started with two kilometers, and then we changed kilometers into miles, and then we changed miles into feet, giving you 6,336 feet. All right, let's look at um, example five together. This problem says, Laura is biking at a rate of 0 0.2 miles per minute, and Justin biked 105 kilometers in 4.2 hours. Who is biking at a faster rate? And then the only conversion factor we're given is that one kilometer is equal to 0.6 miles. So um, let's write out the information we have again. So here we know that Laura goes 0 0.2 miles per, whenever they say per, um, it means we're going to be dividing by minutes. So 0 0.2 miles per minute. And then Justin says that he, they, he has biked 105 kilometers in 4.2 hours. So here you can see that it's really hard to compare who's going faster because the units are completely different. So Laura is in miles, Justin is in kilometers. Um, Laura is in minutes, Justin is in hours. So we're going to need to change one of them so they have the same units and then we can compare them. So let's see if we can maybe change um, Justin's 105 kilometers per hour to miles per minute and then we'll compare it with Laura's from there. So here you see that we actually have two different units going on at the same time. So here it's going to be really important that we're keeping the numerator and denominator separate. So let's start by trying to change kilometers to minutes. So since kilometers is on the top, we're going to put kilometers in the bottom so they will cancel out. And then we can use this conversion factor. We know that one kilometer is equal to 0 0.6 miles. So 
when I cancel those out, I am now in miles per hour, okay? So we're close, but we wanna be in miles per minute. So again, we're happy with miles, but we're not happy with hours. So we need to change that part now. So since hours is in the bottom, this time I'm actually going to put hours on top because again, we always want that unit to cancel out. And then we are trying to convert hours to minutes. We know that there is one hour for every 60 minutes. So the unit hours cancels out. And then if you look at what we have left, we're now in miles per minute, which would match Laura's um, unit. So then we can compare. So we're going to multiply across the top and then multiply across the bottom. So 105 times 0.6 times 1 is 63. And then let's multiply across the bottom. 4.2 times 1 times 60 is 252. And then we can divide that to get our decimal. 63 divided by 252 is 0 0.25. And again, we are now in miles per minute. Okay, so Justin's we can rewrite as 0 0.25 miles per minute. Now we can compare the rates of Laura and Justin. Laura is going 0.2 miles per minute. Justin is going 0.25 miles per minute. So we can see that Justin is going faster. So you can see that we still use dimensional analysis in the same way, and it works in the exact same way even if we have two units going on at the same time. Just be really careful of where you're placing your units, if they're in the numerator or denominator, and then just make sure they're ca canceling out appropriately. All right, so um, why don't you go ahead and pause the video and see if you can give this problem a try. And we'll check the answers in just a few seconds. Okay, so if we compare the information that was given um, for books, we were told that um, they have a mass of 4.1 kilograms per meter, and for magazines, it's 3 pounds per foot. So it's hard to compare the two because they are different units. So I decided to change um, the books from kilograms per meter into pounds per foot. So if you, you can first change kilograms into pounds, and then you can change meters into feet. So notice, since I had meters in the bottom, I put it on the top, and then feet is now on the bottom. This gives us a final unit of pounds per foot, which is what we want. So it turns out that 4.1 kilograms per uh, meter is equal to 2.8 pounds per foot. So 2.8 is less than three, so that means that the uh, magazines end up having a greater mass per unit of height. Okay, here's the last example from um, today's video. So it says, Ruby is doing a walkathon at her school. Each lap, she gets stamps to show how far she has walked. Ruby has 51 stamps after doing 17 laps. Find the rate of stamps per lap and graph this proportional relationship on the x-y axis. Um, so here, um, since we know that she has 51 stamps per lap, 51 stamps sorry, per 17 laps, we can actually reduce that down. So if you do 51 divided by 17, that actually gives you three stamps per one lap. So now we know uh, how many stamps she's getting each lap. So we know like the unit rate um, for this walkathon. And then we can plot this on an xy axis to show um, the growth of stamps for each lap she's doing. So since the numerator is stamps, we'll put stamps on the x-axis. And then we'll put the number of laps on the y-axis. So this is just saying um, she's going to go three units on the x-axis for each one unit on the y-axis. 
So after she gets three stamps for the first, six stamps by the second, nine stamps, so on and so forth. So you can see that each time it's kind of increasing upward um, by three. Okay, this is just a different way um, to represent proportion. So here we're doing it graphically, but it can be useful to us um, when we're looking at different types of word problems. All right, so that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching.